हेलो एंड नमस्कार मैं अनु दीवान स्वागत है आपका पीएम ई विद्या चैनल पर और आज आप देख रहे हैं पीएम ई विद्या चैनल नंबर नाइन क्योंकि आज हम पढ़ने वाले हैं क्लास नाइन का सोशल साइंस का चैप्टर फॉरेस्ट सोसाइटी एंड कलोनलिज्म टू जिसे हमें पढ़ाएंगे हमारे साथ है हमारे एक्सपर्ट मिस्टर सुशील कुमार पी हिस्ट्री कोलकाता से हेलो सर वेरी गुड आफ्टरनून जी मैडम गुड आफ्टरनून टू यू टू एंड आल्सो ऑल द व्यूअर्स ऑफ पी एम ई विद्या चैनल इसे शुरू करने से पहले स्टूडेंट्स के लिए क्या अहम जानकारी अगर आप अपना कोई भी सवाल पूछना चाहते हैं इस चैप्टर से रिलेटेड तो आप हमें फ़ोन कर सकते हैं डबल एट डबल जीरो डबल फोर जीरो डबल फाइव नाइन पर या आप हमें अपना मेल भी भेज सकते हैं डी टी एच डॉट क्लास नाइन एट सी आई ई टी डॉट एन आई सी डॉट इन पर और आप फिलहाल इसे ये पी एम ई विद्या चैनल नंबर नाइन पर देख रहे हैं और बाद में आप इसे यूट्यूब पर एन सी आर टी ऑफिशियल के यूट्यूब पर भी देख सकते हैं सर हम बात कर रहे हैं फॉरेस्ट सोसाइटी एंड कॉलोनिज्म लेकिन इससे पहले हमने इसके पहले भाग में क्या पढ़ा था हम चाहेंगे कि आप बच्चों को उसका एक छोटा सा रिव्यू पहले दे दें फिर हम चैप्टर को आगे बढ़ाएं हाँ जी मैम बिल्कुल सो वंस अगेन वेरी गुड आफ्टरनून टू एवरीवन एंड वार वेलकम टू ऑल द स्टूडेंट्स ऑफ क्लास नाइन्थ डियर स्टूडेंट एज ऑलरेडी वी एव स्टार्टेड दिस चैप्टर एंड ए सेशन इज ऑलरेडी कम्प्लीटेड uh so now you are welcome to the second session of the chapter for the society and colonialism lot of points in this chapter we have already discussed such as we have discussed that between 1880 to 1920 forest cover in the indian subcontinent declined by 9.7 million hectares and the total forest area in india decreased from 108.6 million hectares to 98.2 million hectares and this situation the clearing of indiscriminating cutting of the forest was known as deforestation british colonial policies were considered responsible for this indiscriminate cutting of forest in india so all of them everywhere british sarkar british government uh was criticized for this indiscriminate cutting of forest which forced british government to take action to stop deforestation and hence as a result they implemented scientific forestry dear students all this point we have already discussed and we have also discussed that this scientific forestry was clearly rejected by several ecologists some of them have said that the scientific forestry was nothing scientific at all now from this session onward we will discuss the impact of scientific forestry upon the native peoples and the reaction of the native peoples against the colonial policies so let me start ma'am yes sir please impact of scientific forestry so according to the scientific scientific forestry the first thing that the british government have done in india they implemented forest act by the first forest general officer of india dietrich brandis in 1865 and it was amended twice once in 1878 and then in 1927 according to the act of 1878 forest act the entire forest were divided into three categories reserve forest protected forest and village forest the west forest were called reserve forest and the entry of the villages were strictly banned in this reserve forest it severely affected the lives of native people in the next slide we will see what type of impact of this ban was upon the native people so how were the lives of people affected dear students as we have already discussed the british government according to the scientific forestry had classified the forest into three categories first one was reserve forest second was protected forest and third was reserve forest actually before this classification villager wanted the forest with a mixture of specific species to satisfy different needs such as fuel for the leaves they used to do shifting cultivation there they used to collect different type of forest produce 
and all these things were helpful in their subsistence but on the other hand the forest department wanted trees which were suitable for building ships or railways therefore they restricted the entry of the natives in the most part of the forest which severely affected them so what was this impact before forest law many people were surviving by hunting deer and variety of small animals what it means forest law ke aane se pehle actually all you know for the native peoples for the aboriginal peoples hunting is one of the most one of the major source of livelihood and many of them were surviving by hunting deer and such type of variety of small animals but now hunting was prohibited by the forest laws and one who was caught with hunting and poaching was punished severely the villagers could not take anything from the forest even for their own use of house building or fuel they could take wood from open or village forest only and students as we have already discussed the best forest were the reserve forest and the protected forest entry in the reserve forest was completely restricted to them although in the protected forest with some certain conditions they can go there and collect some things but these conditions were very very punishable to them you can say so they were able to enter only in the open or village forest where there were very less variety of products they can use for themselves now these adivasi communities or the native peoples trade in several forest products such as kettles horns silk cocoons bamboo spices gum etc but now according to the forest law many communities left their traditional job of trading forest product because they were not allowed to enter in the forest and collect this forest produces not only entry was banned but also some of them began to call criminal tribes kuch logon ko kuch communities ko criminal tribes bhi kaha jane laga and they were forced to work in the factories mines and plantation under the government supervision due to these reasons native peoples started the revolt against the colonial government in the different part of the world dear students this revolt was not only organized in india but also in the different part of the world and in the in this session we will see which part of india and which part of world uh, these revolts were organized and we can uh, we we here will elaborate two examples one from bastar and one from java so we will see which were this part where these revolts were organized first of all we will see uh, in which part of india rebellion was organized we can see here siddhu and kanu in the santhal parganas virsa uh, munda of chota nagpur i think all of you are introduced about these two persons uh, you have read about them in class 8 history then alluri sitaram raju of andhra pradesh you will read uh, about alluri sitaram raju in class 10 rebellion which took place in the kingdom of bastar in 1910 and today in this class in this session we will discuss about the rebellion that took place in bastar bastar first of all we will discuss about the geographical location of bastar you can see bastar is located in the southern most part of chatisgarh that means it is located in chatisgarh today central part of bastar is on a plateau that means it is a plateau area the north of this plateau is the chatisgarh plain and to its south is the godavari plain the river indavati flows across bastar from east to west now we'll discuss about the people of bastar yahan ke log kaise the unka livelihood kaisa tha all these points will be discussed here major communities in bastar were maria and muria gonds durwas bhatras and halwas they speak different languages 
बट शेयर कॉमन कस्टम एंड बिलीव बच्चों ये ऐसे भी हमें मालूम है भारत में एक बड़ी मशहूर कहावत है कि यहाँ मिल मिल पे पानी बदले पांच मिल पे वाणी बदले सो आप देख सकते हैं छत्तीसगढ़ की भी जहां हम बात कर रहे हैं जहां डिफरेंट ट्रैवल कम्युनिटीज भी रह रहे हैं आप वहां भी देख सकते हैं बहुत सारे ट्रैवल कम्युनिटीज हैं यहाँ पे वो सभी डिफरेंट लैंग्वेजेस भी बोल रहे हैं लेकिन इसके बावजूद दे शेयर कॉमन कस्टम्स एंड बिलीव द पीपुल ऑफ बस्तर बिलीव दैट ईच विलेज वॉज गिवन इट्स लैंड बाय द अर्थ एक्चुअली दे डोंट बिलीव द एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन ऑफ द ब्रिटिश गवर्नमेंट दे डोंट बिलीव दैट द लैंड शुड बी एडमिनिस्ट्रेटेड बाय द ब्रिटिश गवर्नमेंट बिकॉज दे बिलीव दैट दिस लैंड इज गिवन बाय द अर्थ ओनली दे सो रिस्पेक्ट टू द स्प्रिट ऑफ द रिवर एंड द फॉरेस्ट इन द माउंटेन जो अबोरिजिनल कम्युनिटीज होते हैं नेटिव कम्युनिटीज जो होते हैं उनका नेचर के प्रति जो रिस्पेक्ट है जग जाहिर है हम सभी को मालूम है आपने सेवंथ में भी इसके बारे में पढ़ा है एट्थ में भी पढ़ा है और अब नाइन्थ में भी पढ़ रहे हैं कि वो नेचुरल जो रिसोर्सेज होते हैं उनके प्रति बहुत रिस्पेक्ट दिखाते हैं इधर इट इज रिवर और द फॉरेस्ट और द माउंटेन एवरी ईयर ए मीटिंग वॉज बींग हेल्ड टू डिस्कस द कंसर्न ऑफ विलेजर्स इंक्लूडिंग फॉरेस्ट जो फॉरेस्ट कम्युनिटीज होती हैं, उनका जो हेडमैन होता है अलोंग विद फॉरेस्ट ड्वेलर्स इच ईयर देर वॉज ए मीटिंग बींग ऑर्गेनाइज वेर ऑल द कंसर्न ऑफ द विलेजेस इंक्लूडिंग द फॉरेस्ट वर बींग डिस्कस एंड द सोल्यूशन वॉज टू बी ड्रॉन की वाट टाइप ऑफ सोल्यूशन शुड बी देयर टू सेव द फॉरेस्ट और सॉल्व द प्रॉब्लम ऑफ द पीपल नाउ वॉट वॉज द इम्पैक्ट of forest law upon this people of bastar so the local people looked after and used all the natural resources within a boundary they used to pay a small fee called devsari in form of tan or mail you can see wo ek chhet mein jo rehne wale log the wahan pe jitne bhi natural resources the uska wo istemal karte the aur badle mein ek chhota sa tax ke roop mein ek small fee wo headman ko diya karte the jo devsari ke naam se jana jata tha but now the people of bastar were very worried due to the restriction of entry in the forest they were forced to work free for the forest department unko majboor kiya gaya ki forest department ke liye wo kaam kare unke plantations ke liye kaam kare unke jo factories hain unke jo mines hain unke liye wo kaam kare even they were displaced without any notice yahi nahi unko na keval kaam karne ke liye force kiya gaya but also they were displaced from one place and sent to some another place and it all happened without any notice and at last the terrible famines in 1819 1999 to 1900 and again in 1907 to 1908 restriction to entry in the forest proved to be the last straw wo unke liye bahut hi ghatak aur vinashkari sabit hua now jab forest law ka impact itna bura pada it led to the destruction of to the people of bastar then definitely the reaction the rebellion was to be organized and it happened also in bastar and this initiative was taken by the druba community of the kanger forest listen carefully although there was no single leader in this entire moment no leader was considered as a uniform leader so there was no single uniform leader but many people speak of gunda dhur who emerged as an important figure in this moment in 1910 british government now started to suppress the rebel and took stern actions against them as a result most of the people from the villages the left the villages or and hence the all the villages were deserted people fled into the jungles but however it was very difficult to completely control them so finally the british government had to reduce area under the reservation now we will see another example from outside india and this example is from java indonesia we can see here in indonesia dutch were the colonial power 
while the kalans community of java was a majority community who were the skilled forester and skilled craft persons but unfortunately in 1755 the mataram kingdom of java splitted and 6000 kalan families were equally divided into two kingdoms and it was the great opportunity for the dutch colonial forces they tried to make the kalans work under them but in 1770 the kalans started to resist and they started to resist by attacking a dutch fort at juana in indonesia but were completely surprised now as a reaction the dutch government enacted forest law in java there were several adverse effects of the forest law we can see the impact of the forest law here in 1882 alone 2 lakh 80 thousand slippers were exported alone from java then the dutch imposed rent on the forest and also exempted some villages from these rents on certain condition what was this certain condition if they work collectively to provide free labor and buffaloes for cutting and transporting timber then they will be what exempted to give the rents this system introduced by dutch was known as blend down dynasty system around 1890 surantiko samin of rendu blatung village began questioning state ownership of the forest jaise ki humne dekha bastar mein hua tha bastar ke bhi logon ka manna tha ki forest jo hai natural hai ye earth ka gift hai hum logon ke liye isliye is pe kisi ka adhikar nahi hona chahiye almost same aap dekh sakte hain java mein bhi surantiko samin रेंडू बुलाटन विलेज के एक नेटिव पीपल रहे एक नेटिव लीडर रहे जिन्होंने स्टेट के जंगल पे जो अधिकार था जो स्टेट ऑनरशिप ऑफ फॉरेस्ट था उस पर उन्होंने प्रश्न करना शुरू कर दिया विच वेरी बिकेम विच बिकेम वेरी सून एज ए वाइड स्प्रेड मूवमेंट इन इन चाइल्ड जावा पूरे जावा में क्या हुआ ये एक मूवमेंट के रूप में फैलता चला गया so these were the two impact uh, you can see of the colonial policies one in bastar and one in java now one very important topic of this chapter we are going to discuss the impact of war on the forest bachcho all you know the war brings so uh, huge disaster for the forest it brings indiscriminate cutting of the forest it bring deforestation at the large scale due to several reasons all we know uh, during wars so many uh, war where needs are required uh, which led to the deforestation uh, we can see uh, military attacks uh, on the way to the forest this led to the indiscriminate cutting of the forest aise bahut sare karan hain jiske karan forest ko katna padta hai hum isko india ke example ke dwara aur java ke example ke dwara bhi samajh sakte hain uh we can see it from uh, two examples one from india and one from java how the forest were affected how the deforestation uh comes due to the war you can see in india all the working plants were abandoned at this time we how to stop deforestation how to implement scientific forestry all these plants were abandoned and the forest department cut trees freely to meet british war needs yuddh ke liye jitni bhi zaruratein thi un zaruraton ko pura karne ke liye badi matra mein janglon ko bharat mein kata gaya you can see there is a picture isme dikhaya ja raha hai kis tarike se indian uh, munitions board uh, sule pegoda uh, there is a ship uh, which is completely loaded with the timber which was to be used in the war just like that in java we can see uh, just before the uh, just before the japanese occupy uh, java or indonesia ni uh, dutch ke just baad aap dekh sakte hain ki java pe japanese ka control ho gaya so just before the control uh, control of japanese on java the dutch followed a scorched earth policy yani 
जावा को छोड़ने से पहले भी जावा में रहने तक जितना डच ने नुकसान किया तो किया ही लेकिन जावा को छोड़ने से पहले भी जापानीज कंट्रोल से पहले जो डच गवर्नमेंट है उन्होंने एक नई पॉलिसी को इंट्रोड्यूस किया इस कोस्ट अर्थ पॉलिसी एंड विच हैंस द रिजल्ट वाज इन फॉर्म ऑफ डिस्ट्रॉइंग सॉ मिल्स एंड बर्निंग ह्यूज पाइल्स ऑफ चाइल्ड टिक लोब्स जितने भी जो टिक के पेड़ से उनको बड़ी मात्रा में जलाया गया जितने भी सॉ मिल्स थे उनको नष्ट किया गया सो देट द जापानीज कुड नॉट यूज और यूटिलाइज द फॉरेस्ट ऑफ द जावा and after the dutch the japanese then exploited the forest recklessly uske baad jo japanese government aayi usne bhi badi matra mein janglon ko katna shuru kiya aur is tarike se aap dekh sakte hain ki war jo hai deforestation ka ek bahut bada karan banta hai now the last topic of today new developments in forestry kya kya badlav forestry mein hue us pe hum discuss karenge jaise ki maine bataya ki डिफोरेस्टेशन वॉज नॉट द रिजल्ट ऑफ कॉलोनियल पॉलिसीज ओनली मैं फर्स्ट सेशन में पढ़ा बल्कि कॉलोनियल एज के बाद भी इन द डिफरेंट पार्ट ऑफ द वर्ल्ड जंगल बहुत रेकलेसली काटे गए बहुत बड़ी मात्रा में काटे गए डिफोरेस्टेशन बढ़ाया गया सो सरकारों को इसके लिए सोचना पड़ा सरकारों को इसके लिए एक्शन लेने पड़े काम करने पड़े सिंस द नाइनटीन एटीज government across asia and africa have begun to see the scientific forestry across india from mizoram to kerala dense forest have survived only because villages protected them in sacred groves known as sarnas devara kundu tan re aise bahut sare steps uthaye gaye jiske dwara jangalon ko bachaya ja sake so this is all in this chapter and i think uh, students have a lot to do in this chapter sab sare points ko padhe aur even uh, if they are getting any question they definitely they are most welcome uh, to raise the questions uh, in this channel number 8 of kmb vidya and definitely we will try to sort out this बिल्कुल स्टूडेंट्स अगर आपके पास कोई भी सवाल हो तो आप अपना सवाल हमें मेल कर सकते हैं डी टी एच डॉट क्लास नाइन एट सी आई टी डॉट एन आई सी डॉट इन पर या कॉल कर सकते हैं डबल एट डबल जीरो डबल फोर जीरो डबल फाइव नाइन पर सर अभी हमारे पास फिलहाल अभी एक मिनट बचा है तो हम जाएंगे कि आप बच्चों को एक थोड़ा सा रिवाइज करा दें कि क्या कुछ इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट्स हैं इस चैप्टर में जो उनको बार बार रिवाइज करने की जरूरत है पॉइंट वाइज कैसे रिवाइज करें ये चैप्टर जी 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 मैडम बच्चों अगर हम बात करें इस क्वेश्चन के इंपॉर्टेंट नोट्स की बात करें पॉइंट्स की बात करें तो दे कैन स्टार्ट विद द डेफिनेशन ऑफ डिफॉरेस्टेशन फिर उसके बाद यू कैन गो विद द पॉइंट्स व्हाट वर द फैक्टर्स दैट लेड टू द डिफॉरेस्टेशन इन इंडिया उसमें आप देखेंगे कि किस तरीके से ट्रांसपोर्टेशन जो है इन द फॉर्म ऑफ ट्रेन एंड सिप बिल्डिंग ने भारत में जंगलों के काटने का जो एक बड़ा कारण बना देन यू विल डिस्कस कि इसमें हम ये भी देखेंगे कि क्या वाकई जो हमारे नोमेडिक्स कम्युनिटी जो हमारे फॉरेस्ट ड्वेलर्स हैं क्या वो भी जंगल के काटने के बहुत बड़े कारण रहे हैं इसको भी हम लोग डिस्कस करेंगे उसके बाद आप देखेंगे कि साइंटिफिक फॉरेस्ट्री क्या है इन विच वे दे इंट्रोड्यूस साइंटिफिक फॉरेस्ट्री इन इंडिया देन वी विल सी वी विल सी फॉरेस्ट लॉ वाट आर द प्रोविजन ऑफ फॉरेस्ट लॉ एंड देन वील डिस्कस द इम्पैक्ट ऑफ फॉरेस्ट लॉ अपन द पीपल ऑफ द फॉरेस्ट एंड देन वी हैव टू सी द इम्पैक्ट ऑफ फॉरेस्ट लॉ Uh, one in uh, Bastar and one in Java, and the reaction of people in Bastar and Java. This Thank way, you so much, chapter. sir. The last point that uh, in which way war affected the forest. This is all about this, uh, the points in this chapter. Thank you so much, sir, for this session. Thank you, ma'am. 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 थैंक यू स्टूडेंट्स लेकिन आप अभी कहीं मत जाइएगा एक छोटे से ब्रेक के बाद हम ला रहे हैं मैथ्स का सेशन